Hello musicians, welcome back. My name is Bucky Dirtle and I'm doing another video tutorial on MuseScore 2. Today I'm going to be focusing on this guy right here, this little camera icon. This is Toggle Image Capture. So Image Capture, MuseScore 2 comes with an image capture tool in it and it's really, really useful. Now I've been, I've been, uh, had the opportunity over the many years I've been involved in music to be working on scores with musicians and there's times when you want to send a little piece of a score to somebody because it may be maybe like 15 pages long and you don't want to send everything. You, sometimes you want to just send a little excerpt. And uh, the image capture tool is great for that. It will do some really cool little things for us. Um, also, um, I do find, I, I am a music teacher as well, and I do find that there are times when I want to give students a portion of a score for various reasons. And, and this can be very useful for that too. Okay, so let's have a look at what it does, <clears throat> because there are several features within it. So if I turn it on, I, I click, I just click the little camera and it, it turns on. So now it gives me this window that I can move around on the screen here. Um, if I two finger tap or right click on my um, mouse, it opens up the, the preferences here for me, for the settings. Now I have a few things here I want to talk to you about. First of all, uh, let's not go to the very top. Let's go down a little bit to the middle uh, where it says auto resize the page, resize A, B, C, D, set standard size. Okay, this section in the middle here. Now, first of all, when you open it up, you're going to be given any sort of size of window here. Oh, sorry. And you can grab the corners and resize the window where you want to resize. So, for example, if you want to just take a snapshot of a couple of bars at the beginning, you can do that. Okay, you can size it in like this manually and do that. Um, so you can move it around. And then when you turn it off and turn it back on again, it comes back to where you left off. So let's say, for example, you might say, well, I want to take a screen grab, uh, an image of just one single bar. And I want the bar to be, you know, like that size, like this. Um, let me make this a little bigger. Okay. So now, let's say I want to make it this size. So I, I fine tune it and I get it just the size I want, like this. And let's say, okay, that's the size I want to use for a little while now for a couple of different screen grabs. I can take that size. I can go down and say set standard size. I can say, okay, I'm going to make this size A. Okay, so let me back out a little bit again. Um, and by the way, I back out on my Mac by holding on command and your mouse wheel. I understand on a PC, it's control mouse wheel, but that's it on Mac. So if I then go and I, you know, I grab my corner and I resize some for something else, you know, say I do it like that. If I want to go back to that original size that I had when I, what I, I just set, I set that to standard size, set size A. So now if I go to size A right here, bang, it goes right back to the same size I had. It doesn't go back to the same position, but it goes to the same size. So maybe I want to do it like that. That'll give me the size I want or back to here again, the size I want. I can set several. So let's say, for example, let's say that I want to do a, um, I want to get the size that's going to take in an, a full, in standard size header, standard size header like that. Okay, so I can I can right click again and go down to set standard size. I'll say, make that one B. So again, if I want to, if I resize my stuff and I'm going around doing some other work, and I say, oh, I want to go back to the header size. I go back to resize B, and it goes back to my header size, and I can just place it where I need it to go. It doesn't go back into position. It goes back to the same size. And remember, I had my size A. I can go to that one, and that's the size A. That was for one single bar like that. <coughs> Excuse me. So we can use that option here, set standard size. It set four different default sizes that we can use. Very, very useful. I find that very useful myself. So that's our first little setting there. Auto resize to page. Now, right now, I have just this small twinkle twinkle uh, open here. Okay, nothing to it, not, not, nothing fancy, but it's just a single little piece. So if I go auto resize to page, there it goes. It takes in every element in the entire part. Now, <clears throat> if my piece was longer, like maybe five lines long, it would take it all. 
it would include it all in there. Okay, so that's resize to page. That's what that does. Okay, auto resize to page. Okay, so now let's say you've got your size done and you, you're ready to, to do something else with it. You can go, you have a few options. Let's start at the top. We have copy, and copy does just what you think. You can copy it and then go to a, a word processor document or an email and you can paste it right in. It'll paste right in, and that's it. It will go in as an image. Very, very useful. I've been in the past uh, working with musicians online, and I've needed to send them a piece of music, and I've had to go take a screen grab, take it into Photoshop or some other a GIMP, and edit it, export as JPEG or a PNG, and then send it to the other musician. It's a pain. <clears throat> this here, I can just go copy, and paste it right into an email, right into a, a document, whatever I want to do. That's not the only thing I can do. If I go down to the bottom, I have save as. I can save as print mode, and I can save as screenshot mode. Now you're saying to me, Bucky, what is the difference between screenshot mode and print mode? Well, print mode makes it look really nice and tidy. Let me just get it off the screen. It would look just like it would if it was being printed. There would be no, no see this, the blue border around the the um the header there's this and there's other little markings that would happen as you're working through your documents related to text and annotations well print mode gets rid of that print mode just prints out the black and white and if you go screenshot mode which would be this one here it will save it as an image that takes in all everything so the blue lines around the header will be included any other any kind of annotations or anything that's not meant to be in the final printed version it'll all be there so screenshot mode versus print mode and that saves it as a png you can put it on your desktop somewhere you know and and it doesn't have to be a full page if you wanted to go back to like the resize a let's say we wanted to oops sorry about that let's say we wanted to grab the thing and do this i can also do uh, print mode there and screenshot or print mode and it would do the same thing Okay, so that's that's that. <clears throat> we also have here um, a resolution 300 DPI. If you want to, you can make that higher or lower. That's up to you. Uh, you know, that's just dots per inch. I'm not going to go into that in this tutorial because that's something you can look up somewhere else. Uh, it's just a resolution. Transparent background. Now, if you have transparent background turned on like this, when you do your print mode or your screenshot mode, it will be perfectly white. Okay, it'll be white because it'll be you can't see the background. Uh, if you have uh, transparent mode turned off like this, then the color of the virtual paper will be there. And you can look into that. We're going to go over this in another tutorial, but you can look at that into canvas, paper, background, these sorts of things. This is going to dictate what you see and what you don't see when you have transparent background selected or deselected. I tend to leave it all, uh, as transparent background on. It gives me a nice tidy uh, image. So there you go. So that's it. There's a lot of things in this, isn't there? There's a lot of things to cover, a lot of things to use. It's a great tool, image capture. There are there are pieces of software out there that, that are on the market that only do what this does. And this is just one single tool within this big suite of notation tools. So really cool little feature. Image capture. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you find this useful. If you do uh, enjoy this software, be sure to go to uh, the developer's website and, and uh, show your support for their work because this is an open source application. Okay, thank you for listening. I appreciate you watching and I will see you next time.